Okay, so I figured for the Premier Plasma guys, I'd make a super short, easy startup video for the absolute beginner. So once you have everything up and running, you think you know, you're going to Mach 3, um, some of the stuff you'll see is this thing will be flashing down here. You gotta turn that, you gotta reset that and make that green in order to be able to move your torch around. So at that point, if your torch is wired up and everything, you should be able to jog it around with your arrow keys. Up, up, down, left, right, um, torch up, torch down. Super simple stuff. Um, so for the very beginning, we're gonna do just a CAD drawing. So what I'm building right now is a pizza oven. So these are my doors. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail how to draw a set of doors or even how to draw a box, but it's just for test files, you could say, okay, I'm, I just wanna be able to cut a box out. So you could take your line, you know, you'd basically click on the line link here, take it over wherever you wanna start, zero, zero, and let's say you wanna make it uh, four inches by four inches. So you draw yourself a box four inches by four inches, like so. Okay, so then what you need to do, so there's your box, four inches by four inches. Kind of the same concept, you just draw your picture. So what you wanna do is, I'm gonna delete the box because I don't want it on my drawing, but I would go in here and I would hit File, Save As, and I would type in my label, Pizza Box Door Trim. Click Save. It's asking for to replace it because I already have it. Click yes, but then you want to go in here and export it. And you want it to be a DWG DXF R12 DXF. Click OK. It's going to ask you how, what you want to name it. Obviously, I name it the exact same thing. I hit save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. Okay, so now you've created, I've, I've created this drawing here, hypothetically, which I already drawn out. So I'm going to minimize this, and then I'm going to go into Sheet Cam. Double click on your sheet cam tab here and sheet cam will fit. So you want to go in here, file, import drawing. Okay, so you get your window. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on pizza box door trim. <laughs> and then this is going to be options. So your inches is what I, I'm using. When you get into Inkscape, I think you have to use custom and that's accurate to make your inkscape come out uh, the same the way it should so i'm going to click ok and it's going to show my drawing here now you can click on this once with your left click and then you can zoom in and out obviously the computers are a little slow that you get with this but you could do all that um, so here's my image and what you want to look for some of the stuff you want to look for is the red line is your outer image yellow line is in inner and then on my image, obviously, let me see if I can get to to work. I've got some circles here where my uh, latches for my handles are gonna go. Um, but that's basically my door trip. So I'm gonna go over here to operation. And what you have here is all your tools. And these ones came preloaded. So if you're working with 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, this is all preloaded in there and it's pretty accurate. So I go down to here to operations and it's gonna come up new jet cutting operation. Yep, because I wanna cut this out. And what it's going to tell me here is, do you want outside offset? Outside offset means whether it's going to start on the inside or start on the outside. We, I always want mine to start on the outside. Um, my layer is up here. It says pizza door, box door trim. You can have multiple layers in here and only want to cut parts of it. And in Sheet Cam, you can create layers. For this purpose, it's given me one option. Um, I have it punched in as tool T7 12 gauge. My feed rate's 130. Um, I'm sure some people go faster, some go slower. That's just mine for a 45 hypertherm. But I'm basically gonna come down here and everything's set pretty good. My lead in is an arc, which basically, I'll click on okay here. So just, just remember lead in arc, lead out, none. Uh, then my loop size, all these things matter. So when I click okay, it just generated a G-code. And here's my image. You can see it's all in green. The lead-in is gonna be, let's see. So what it's gonna show you is your very first cut, it's not, it's, it's right here. It says S1. So it's gonna come here and that's my lead-in, is that little arc right there. So S1's gonna cut a circle, 
Torch is gonna shut off, lift up, come over here, touch down to S2 with my little lead in, and then it's gonna come off, and then it's gonna go up here, S3, and it's gonna cut the inside of this door panel, and then it's gonna come over here and start S4 and lead in, and cut the inside of this door panel, and then my very last cut is gonna be the perimeter. Oh no, sorry, S5 is my dividing cut, um, and then S6 is going to be the final cut. So it's gonna to go to S5, it's gonna start S4, it's gonna do its cut, it's gonna stop here, follow the blue line, it's gonna cut S5, lift up, shut the torch off, touch down at S6, and then cut all of S6. Um, honestly, you can change these and they can cut in different, different orders. I don't usually mess with it because I don't have problems with tilt-ups and stuff with stuff this size, but I would probably cut S6 before S5. I'd switch those, have this whole piece cut, and then have it cut in half. Um, but you don't have to. This is going to work just fine. So I clicked post process. It created, or no, I, I kicked, sorry. I, I did my operation. It showed what I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to click post process right here. And it's going to ask me, what do you want to save it for to, to make the G code? I'm going to leave it the same. I always do. And I'm going to replace the one I already have. And if you had troubles, um, it would come up right up here. There'd be uh, exclamation point yellow or a red. Um, the red ones means it's probably not gonna work, right? Yellow ones, sometimes you have overlapping lines that you don't even know about because you, you did it in the drawing. It'll delete those for you. Not as, it'll tell you what the problem is and you can decide whether it's, a, it's important or not. So that created my G code and the G code is what gets imported into Mach 3. So I've got my table almost set up here. Um, I'm gonna move it to zero, or where I think zero is on my table. So right now the torch is just kind of floating here. So I'm gonna move it, and, and one of the, the shortcut here is if you wanna move fast, you hold the shift key down, right? And then do up, moves fast. If you don't hold the shift key, that's your regular, if you hold the control key and you, you tap the up button, it's moving in very small increments. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna create a new zero spot for me. So I'm gonna lower this and get it as close to where I, I think my zero, zero for the table should be. So that's that's pretty close. It's, it's close enough for me and what I'm doing. And then what I do, like when I have cuts that go across the table like that, I'll usually run the, the torch to make sure it's not gonna run off the metal anywhere. So that looks pretty good. It's, it's gonna make a decent good. It's gonna leave a little bit of extra material there, but that, that's okay. So that's my zero, zero. So I'm gonna come back to Mach 3, and I'm gonna hit zero, 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 to zero all. And I'm sure you could, there's other ways to do it, but. Um, and then I'm gonna import my G code. So right here, load G code. Scroll down, you should have the one you're working on, whatever it is. I keep myself on a desktop until I'm done with it, and then I put it in a folder for the project I'm working on once I'm done cutting. So I'm gonna open this, and it's gonna import the G code. Right there, and then right over here, you're gonna see your little image, and you can right click on this thing and move it around. You can zoom in by scrolling with your mouse, zoom out. But it's basically showing you the same stuff you saw in sheet cam. Okay, so I'm ready to go. My torch is on, my air is on. This is my own little water setup. I like having a little bit of water on there. Just, I don't like flooding my table. Um, at this point, I'm ready to go. I can hit cycle start, and the table's gonna go off to the races here. Just like that, it's not cutting because I didn't turn my torch on. So that's, that's a good thing to see. I'm gonna hit stop. And then I'm going to, for me, because I didn't really do anything yet, I start from scratch because I want the table at zero. This is probably not necessary. Um, but I, I'm gonna re-zero everything and reload my G-code. Just, I, I've done things where I've done multiple cuts and I've used the same zero reference, especially when I'm doing the router and I'm doing engraving, I want different depths. Um, but I haven't done it with this table in this system yet. So I, I don't want to screw up the metal. <laughs> um, so basically I just started over. I reset my zeros, reload the G-code. It shows my drawing is at zero, zero right here. Um, so I can hit cycle start and then we should, now we should be, 
running properly. So that's pretty much it. It cut, you can see where it did the lead-ins. Um, right here is where it let in. The, and the reason it does that uh, for real beginners is if it started right on top of your line, it would, it would give you a little punch out on your, on your, this is my finished piece, this is my scrap piece. So if I didn't do the lead-in and I punched in with no lead-in, it, it might leave a little indention on my finished piece and I don't want that. So you might, it might not matter to some people, but that's things you can play with as you get more experience. But this is just a quick startup video to get guys that just got their table cutting stuff. He provides test files you can cut with. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of work that you don't know about as far as getting your table level and square and true. Um, there's, there's some maintenance. Once you get it put together and you run it for a few hours, I recommend going back through every single nut and bolt because the little gears and the motors come loose. These bearings, this thing settles kind of into place. These bearings come loose, they don't, make, they don't all make contact. And all that little stuff is gonna define the quality of your cut, along with, you know, setting the tool up from hypertherm to have the right speeds and everything. That's the basics. Having clean air, a good filter system, um, and just knowing the speeds. The speeds, you should, they should be really close from hypertherm. These guys know what they're doing. Um, some guys are running these things at 200 to 220 inches per minute, depending on what they're cutting, and their cuts are super clean because they take the time, you know, they're using a full water table, they know the speeds are right, they know the amperage is right, but everything is just dialed in. So the maintenance on these things is really important. Um, the height of your torch matters. Try to be, you know, if, if you're getting crappy cuts, it's because you're not being accurate with all the pieces that it needs. Um, but that's a real quick startup video. I'm probably going to do another one for Inkscape just to show people how to get through that. It doesn't come with the with the uh, computer. It's a free download. Worth it's, it's it's so worth it. If you want to do any type of art, Inkscape is so easy to learn, and you could do anything with any image on that software. So, quick 15 minute video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. I hope it helps some of these guys out there are just getting started.